Hi there. Um, I'm Deacon Chris Evans. For those of you that don't know me very well, uh, I'm one of the deacons of Blessed Sacrament. And Annie had asked me to talk to you guys about, um, we had started out with an idea about talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We've kind of done that a lot as a group. And I was kind of hoping that we could combine talking about what you guys want to have as your patron saints and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So the gifts that you're given, um, then transform into this thing that you spread outward, the fruits that you have. Um, so what do I get out of this confirmation thing anyway is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We'll go quickly through these. So we have wisdom, understanding, fear of the Lord, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, and piety. Um, those are, this is from um, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, that's what CCC means, paragraph 1831. If you ever want to look at the Catechism for the Catholic Church, God bless you. And everything is split out into paragraph numbers so that you can find it easily. Um, these things that are listed up here are also listed in your Bible. Um, that's where we get all this stuff from. Um, but they're extrapolated from much of the New Testament uh, epistles. So these things are what we know the Holy Spirit gives to us as gifts for us. Um, but as we all know as um, good Catholics and good Christians, we know that those gifts that were given weren't meant for us to just have our own cup to drink from. Our cup is supposed to overflow so that others can drink from that as well. So what I wanted to do was come up with some of the saints that you might pick and some that you might never have heard of before that um, exemplify the fruits of the Spirit, the way we can see what outwardly flowed from those gifts. So here's our fruits. Um, we start here with charity, joy, generosity, kindness, modesty, patience, peace, chastity, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Um, the little quote here in the middle, which I'm sure you can't read from there, is just so every good tree bears fruit and a rotten tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit nor a rotten tree bear good fruit. Each tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. So by their fruits you will know them. Um, we don't often talk about being thrown into the fire, um, but we are given these gifts of the Holy Spirit. We are intended to feed other people with these fruits that we that bear out from those gifts. Um, and as we talked about not very long ago in our Gospels, um, there is a decision to be made. Um, so. Next slide is going to be, we're going to start with charity, and we're going to talk about a saint that I think exemplifies that, that you may want to look into more deeply and find out whether they're someone that you want to hold up as your hero um, for charity. Not terribly surprising that I chose St. Teresa of Calcutta. Um, Mother Teresa is a saint that lived in my lifetime. Um, she died in... 1997, she was born in 1910. She was canonized in 2016, so certainly within all of your lifetimes. Um, something I want to talk about with charity, um, there's a definition that's useful. It's a, the theological virtue by which love of God above all things for his own sake, that we love of God above all things for his own sake, and our neighbor as ourselves for the love of God. That's also from the Catechism. That's um, paragraph 1822, in case you want to go look it up. Um, so you will see the fruits of the Holy Spirit. This fruit will often be called love. Um, and Catholics translate charity into love, not because we think that the only way that you can love someone is by giving to them, but the definition of love, if you read Thomas Aquinas ever, is willing the good of the other. And that, I think, Mother Teresa did um, in an impressive way. She gathered a group of people to herself, the Sisters of Charity, um, went out into the slums, fed the poor, um, and, and most noticeably dealt with the dying. Um, it was her original plan to simply give those people in Calcutta and other areas a, a peaceful death. They'd just been thrown on the street to die on their own. She brought them in and she nurtured them as they went to meet their Lord. 
charity, love beyond self. A saint you probably never heard of, Saint Philip Neri. Um, he was born in 1515. He died in 1595, so he's 80 years old. Um, he was canonized in 1622. He is called the Apostle of Rome. Um, the customary question he always asked was, "Well, brothers, when shall we begin to do good?" The quote that's on here that you may or may not be able to read from there is, A joyful heart is more easily made perfect than a downcast one. Um, Philip Neary had a really tough job. He was alive during the middle of the uh, Protestant Reformation, um, and Rome was, was not really a hospitable place for people that asked questions. Um, but Philip Neary went through Rome, spoke to them in joy, reminded them of the, the, the excitement, the exuberance that can be had for God in our lives, and that we can love each other in a way that is, is beautiful even when we disagree. Um, so, he is who I choose, chose for joy. Isabella of Portugal. I didn't mention on each of these, I, I'll list their feast day as well. Um, so you can go through and kind of look and maybe some of these match your birthday. It's a wonderful idea to take a look at your birthday and and look at who's the, the saint for that day. Um, July 4th, our Independence Day, is given to Isabella. Um, she was born in 1291, died in 1336. She was canonized in 1625. So she was canonized 300-ish years after she lived. Um, she was canonized three years after Philip Neary, who lived 200 years plus after her. An interesting kind of thing. Um, but the reason that she's called the um, a patron of peace in this instance is that her children were fighting um, in Rome, right? Rome. Um, there was a civil war, and she came out between the two warring factions and stood between them and begged them for peace, encouraged them to stop this silly fighting that they were doing and find a peaceful way to end this conflict. Um, in your schools, <laughs> sometimes you need to be the person that stands between the two warring factions and begs for peace. In your homes, that may be the case. In the world that you may be called to that if that's something that you feel like you want to sit in the middle of um, if you have the courage to be peaceful in those instances Isabella might be a good choice for you Monica Monica was born in 331 and she died in 387 um, we don't know when she was canonized because they didn't really canonize them in the same way we we're pretty um, I don't know, litigious. We're very um, legalistic about the way we do canonization nowadays. Um, Monica was the mother of St. Augustine. Um, and if anyone exemplifies patience better than Monica, um, it's hard to know. Augustine was, um, was a very late convert to Christianity. Um, he was a womanizer. He had an illegitimate child with a, a woman that he didn't marry. Um, and Monica prayed and prayed and prayed for him to come to the faith. And eventually her patience, her perseverance in those things led to his conversion um, and leads us to remember her um, in those situations. Kindness. St. Veronica. We know almost nothing about St. Veronica. What we know is, when we do Stations of the Cross, we honor Monica, because Monica is the one that came to Jesus with a towel to wipe the sweat off his face. Maybe, just maybe, you never want to be really known for the good that you do, but you want to do good. Nobody knows when she died. Nobody knows anything about her, except that she followed the rules of Christ. 
She reached out to her brother who was in prison and she gave him something to wipe his brow. Um, and she exemplifies when I was in prison, you visited me. James the Lesser. What a great name to have, James the Lesser. James the Lesser is one of the two apostles named James. Um, James the Lesser, this is a really interesting slide, and if I get a chance, I'll share it with you all. Um, I'm not sure of all of it, um, but if it's true, it's super cool. Um, it says here that Jesus, he and Jesus were almost physically identical, and that's why Judas had to kiss Jesus in the garden. Um, he's related in some way to Jesus. Um, the epistle of St. James is from James the Lesser. Um, it is about two pages long. Um, take a moment, 10 minutes, read the epistle of St. James. From the epistle of St. James, we get um, the reminder that, that's sitting on top of the hand. <laughs> Don't drop your camera. Um, we get the reminder that faith without works um, is dead. Um, as Catholics, we believe that we are saved by the grace of God, but that salvation, much like these acts of kindness, or these, these fruits of the Spirit, I should say, are meant to be gifted outward. Um, if we have a conversion, we show that through the fruits that we have, that we bear. Um, yeah, it was um, likely the, the book was written somewhere between 60 and 62, the epistle, um, and he died in 62. Um, yeah, it, he's just an amazing fellow. Uh, there's a great prayer on here too, so hopefully somewhere we'll get this slide deck out to you guys. Um, May the 3rd is his feast day. Generosity. St. Nicholas. We should all remember that guy. We had his feast day just a couple of days ago and when we were recording this on the 8th. Um, there's two slides that I had. This, this beam just couldn't go without. Um, if you can't read it from there, it says, I only came here to give presents to kids and punch heretics, and I just ran out of presents. Um, St. Nicholas was present at the Council of Nicaea, um, where he punched a guy named Arius. Um, they got into a, a fist fight debating whether um, the Arian heresy that uh, was true or not. Um, if you feel a little bit like a warrior in your faith, um, but you, you desperately love folk too, um, because this is the other one. You'll often see Nicholas with three gold balls or three oranges or something with him, um, and that represents the three uh, young women's dowry that he paid. Um, he was born of a, a wealthy family. He didn't want any of it, so he took all that he had and he gave it to the poor. Um, the reason we put stockings up is because of the story of Nicholas, that he, he would wander by this person's house who he knew he had three daughters, and when their dowry was coming up, when they needed to get married, he would throw gold in and it would land in their stocking. Um, Nicholas is um, the best part of Santa. The opportunity for us in December, not to just get presents for our family, but to find someone who will never know who we are and to give them something that they desperately need. Um, so, if so, think about Nicholas. Gentleness, St. Francis de Sales. Um, let your speech be gentle, frank, sincere, straightforward, candid, and faithful. Do not look forward in fear to the challenge changes in life. Rather, look to them with full of hope as that as they arise, God, whose very own you are, will lead you safely through all things. And when you cannot stand it, God will carry you in his arms. Um, Francis de Sales was well known for his gentleness in speech. Um, he lived between 1567 and 1622. He was canonized very soon after he died in 1665. Um, once again, during the Protestant Reformation. Um, he lived very close to what would be called enemy territory for Catholics, where the Calvinists lived. Um, 
he decided he should lead an excavation, an expedition to bring 60,000 Calvinists back to the Catholic Church. He did it without battle. Uh, he did it simply with the gentleness of his, his speech. Um, and he brought many of those people um, back to the church, back to the truth of the gospel. Um, and, and through that, maybe you can see in yourself um, the willingness to stand before the gale, to stand before the raging storm that is our world, speak gently in love to them, um, to bring them home. Faithfulness. Thomas More, June 22nd. I die the king's faithful servant, but God's servant first. Thomas More and Henry VIII were friends. Um, they were companions. Th uh, Henry VIII relied heavily on Thomas More uh, in his government, um, but Thomas More was Catholic. Um, when Henry VIII wanted to divorce his wife without any good reason, <laughs> just because she didn't give him sons, basically, um, Thomas More said no. He didn't go to their wedding um, because of that slap in the face to the king, I guess. Um, he was ordered executed. Um, one of the things that I read about him is uh, July 6th is the day that he was um, killed, executed. Um, but he was joking as he went up the scaffold to be killed. Um, and he said that while they had to help him on his way up because he was bound, he would find he would be okay on the way down by himself. Um, so a man strong in his faith, understanding that sometimes we have to die for it. Um, we probably won't ever have to be killed directly for it, but there's little deaths that will happen have to happen every day. Friends that we will lose for some period of time because. They can't stand the goodness that we represent. Um, he is faithful to his servant, his king. Thomas More was faithful to his king. He did what his king asked him to do until it caused him to come up against his faith. And then he had to stand first for God. A wonderful example of that. Modesty. St. Maria Goretti. Um, there's actually, obviously, two saints in this picture. John Paul II has been canonized. Maria Goretti um, was born in 1890. She died in 1902. She was um, about to be raped by a guy and begged him not to. So instead, he stabbed her, I think, 11 times. And then she tried to run away, and he stabbed her another three times. On her deathbed, she forgave him for stabbing her. Um, years and years and years later, 27 years later, um, he was converted while in prison. Um, first thing he did when he got out of prison was went to Maria's mother and begged for her uh, forgiveness as well. Um, what she said was, if my daughter can forgive him, who am I to withhold forgiveness? Um, I chose her for modesty um, because she protected herself in that way. She wasn't, um, you know, pursuing men. She was simply doing work at her house. And this person who thankfully converted later couldn't control himself and attacked her. Um, and it's just a, a, a great story. She's July 6th, I guess I didn't mention that. Um, so take a look into that. Um, Aloysius Gonzaga, uh, self-control. One of the first things I looked at uh, when I saw Gonzaga come up in self-control when I was researching this on the inter internet was I was reminded of a, of a great friend of mine um, who went to Gonzaga University and it took years for me to figure out that there was a guy named St. Aloysius Gonzaga and that he went to a Catholic school. Never knew. I didn't visit him in Washington State, which was a long way away. 
because um, we had, I think, probably two and a half kids by then, and we were a little busy. <laughs> um, but he was born in 1568, he died in 1591, he was not very old, um, but wasn't canonized for another 150 years or so until 1726. Um, he vowed perpetual virginity at age nine. He knew when he was nine years old that he wanted to give all of himself to Christ. Um, it was said that all through his life, he remembered whenever he was in the room with women to keep his eyes down, um, lest he be tempted in some way. Um, a man that that represented something that we seldom see in our world anymore in self-control. Someone who knew that God was calling him to something special, removed things from his life that would cause him to stray, um, and when he couldn't remove all of them, remembered all the time what his first calling was. Lastly, chastity. St. Joseph. I honestly picked St. Joseph for chastity before I learned that the Pope Francis um, is uh, dedicating 2021 to Joseph, the father of Jesus, the earthly father of Jesus, obviously. Um, May 1st is his, his um, feast day. Um, there are no words spoken by Joseph in all of the Bible. Um, but what we know was Mary was an ever virgin. Which means, once Joseph married Mary, they lived a chaste relationship. Um, I also just heard, and and hopefully you guys have seen by now, uh, Ascension Presents put out a video, put out a video um, with Sister Miriam Lake, who was at NCYC this last time, if I'm not mistaken, um, and she was talking about this image. Um, this is called a quiet moment. Um, Schultz. I can't remember. Timothy is his first name. Schmaltz or small Schmaltz. Um, and she was talking about the strength and grace um, in this beautiful, chaste, pure moment. Mary with Jesus listening to her heart, listening to Joseph's. Um, what a wonderful example he is to us without ever speaking of the strength and the beauty of of a father of a husband's love um it's uh, told that he died in 18 so jesus was just becoming a man um when joseph passed away um and i'm going to read the prayer to saint joseph um that i have for this um it's beautiful Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God entrusted his only Son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself as a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. Um, gosh, what a... What a beautiful prayer. Um, what a great reminder that in us, as we receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit, these fruits will be borne out. All of us more than others, many, any of us more than others. The gifts and the fruits that I have most are not what Annie has most, are not what my wife has most, not what any of my kids have most. Um, we are each individuals in that. But we can look to the saints um, and see in their lives something that we wish to emulate, the person that we hope to be more like. Um, so, you will be given these gifts. Um, these fruits will bear out in your lives. Um, but I encourage you to spend more time looking at the person you are now, the person you hope to be later, and finding a saint as your, um, as your guide for that. So for that, I thank you if you made it all the way to the end of this video. I'm shocked for those that have, but God bless you. May he live within your heart, and may this confirmation process that you're going through change your lives for the better.